Storytellers AZ, a discussion group for people who make a living telling stories. Here we are again for another Storytellers podcast. Let's tell everyone who we are. <laughs> uh, Matt Fox. Matt, tell, tell us, you know, what, what do you do? What do you, what Background, do you? Background, marketing, sales. Perfect. Jan James, uh, editor, Edit- video. Okay. My name's Tyler Hurst, and I type on the computer and tap the table. <laughs> Don't tap the table. And I, I'm Chris Connery, sales guy who uh, isn't in, doesn't believe in the word sales, so that's part of my new story. The the topic that Tyler set out for this one is, you know, what's your favorite story element? When you're when you're creating a story, when you're when you're going out to to write something uh, or visualize something, if you're a video person, is you know what what's your favorite story element? Do you, are you a plot person? Are you a character person? Are you a settings and backgrounds person? So Matt, uh, now being a marketing and sales guy, obviously your your job is to tell stories. What what's your favorite part of the story, and what's your favorite element uh, when you start writing? What do you start with? Never thought of it that way, actually. I mean, mm-hmm. when it comes down to it, it's what's the outcome? It's a plot. Yeah. I mean, what's the outcome? Oh, okay. What do we want them to do? So you're looking at telling the story or the plot there. Yeah. Okay. Jan, what about you? Discovery. I've worked on very few projects where I uh, start the storyline out ahead of time and interview knowing where I'm going with something. Okay. Um, done a couple like that. But to me, the process is always discovery. I like hearing people's ideas on the topic and catching the nuance of, Opposites that if you combine them, those, those opinions so actually theme. take yeah. it in yeah. different directions. Okay. Yeah. So that'd be theme. Theme, yeah. theme almost. But, it can almost. You can almost apply setting there in a lot yeah. of ways too. Is yeah. kind of the, the where that's, that's going. That's cool. and, and and I actually do that when I write. When I'm writing for myself for non-businessy related things, if I want to write a, a when I have written fiction in the past, is I'm a I'm a settings and a kind of a background mm-hmm. thing. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those. Like if, if the stuff I wrote was a movie, it'd be, be that really beautifully cinematic movie that has a so, horrible, so horrible you're plot. The more, so you're the more <laughs> tangible background, and and she was the intangible. I'm the background Michael setting. Bay of background. Yes, there you I go. Mean, okay. explosions and big beautiful colors, but the writing, the the dialogue is just absolute crap. Well, when you say intangible, though. Uh, yeah, you're talking about the themes and the feelings and the and the and the, the process of discovery that happens from saying the words or, or moving right. it along, and that's where I think your thought process lies. Right. Now, Tyler, I'm going to guess from your writing, and I wonder if you agree with me here, is you're more of a character focused uh, person. Absolutely, 100. percent There's no question there. It is character. It is people. Um, just about everything I write is from a point of view. Uh, I think that uh, as a as someone who grew up mostly journalism type stuff. Mm-hmm. Is we always want to know what the basically average guy thought of 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 so and so story. So right. while it's not always first person, it is always from the eyes of whoever's closest and whoever's uh, enjoying it the most, or whoever's the most vivid recollection of it. Even if you have to invent a persona to uh, to take a to take the place of a character to tell right. a story, um, it's always character focused. See now, my business writing tends to be more character focused. Uh, my business writing, like my blog especially, that's, tends to be... Because that's an emotional hook. Right. It tends to be, I'm, I'm speaking in the voice of either the customer or the salesperson or the sales manager mm-hmm. um, in, in those instances. So my business writing tends to be more focused, but my personal writing tends to be more like Jan. It's more, more yeah. theme or setting focused. So, I mean, it sounds like we've got, you know, we've got well, four then, of us here. But then, you know, and long, but long term, because I write so much in the present, if I was writing more of a long term type piece or a projection, then, you know, you're more looking like Matt because you have to have... An ending, and you have right. to figure out how to get there, mm-hmm. too. So that's so that's my secondary. It's almost like a one and a one, and then a, and a, a close secondary. So let me ask uh, ask everyone a question then. So so Matt, you're more of a plot, and you know the story itself focused. Do you struggle reading things that are focused more character focused or or setting focused? And you know maybe Tyler, for your case, do you struggle reading things that aren't character focused because that's the way your brain tends to be wired when you're doing creative things? No, I you know I wouldn't. Maybe struggles wrong, but do you generally seek out things that are written the way you would write them? Absolutely not. No. 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 Freaks me out. Yeah, so yeah I think I, I, then I'm, I'll be the stand out here and say, yes, I do. I mean, I, I see people I want to write like, like, a, you know, Bill Simmons, of course, or, or a Klosterman or something like right. that. But it's tough to read them because... See, I generally will find myself either subconsciously and occasionally consciously I will seek out writing that is similar to my own. Now I, I do enjoy certain writers that are that are very different than me, um, but I, I generally will seek out writing that's similar. It's very character driven, especially for for business or work related things. I prefer character driven things, and a lot of the 
a lot of the fiction I read is very setting, very, you know, very enriched setting. Uh, you know, take things like Dune that are very, the setting plays a main, mm-hmm, the setting mm-hmm. is a character in that book, mm-hmm. uh, or those books as the case may be. I mean, the characters are all very powerful in that too, but the setting is as much of a character as anything else. Story, yeah. I mean, the, the planet plays the yeah. big role. And so I generally will tend to, to seek those things out. So mm-hmm. it, it's, it's an interesting thing. That, that I've noticed, and I was curious if it fit on you, on your guys' viewpoint now, as well. I do like um, the TV shows that are very much like my writing. So I don't know if, I don't know if that's if that's a similar type thing, but Psych. Two short, and a Half Men is not short, a character-driven show, Tyler. No, I mean a short, punchy, quick, burn-noticed, um, uh, hmm. white-collar, uh, Psych, those type of funny back-and-forth. Um, right. Aaron, anything Aaron Sorkin writes, um, I do enjoy those very, very much. And that's how I want my writing to sound. Okay. Which is weird. That is, this is such an interesting thing to examine what it is that we're drawn to. I, I'm reading a book right now in the from the 1500s to the 1700s in England, and it's it's actually a mystery that they're trying to solve. And and I was recognizing as I'm in, intrigued with the plot and where they're going with the characters, the descriptive of the land itself, the language, the mores, all of that. It's so rich, and I thought, how on earth do they write this stuff? Because I, I have no clue. When I try and write, that eludes me. It's the themes right. that I'm going to. So I'm getting out of the, the book what I want, the themes. But I like reading things that get my mind in, in a broader base. So let me ask you a question then. And you know, A very similar writer that does this, I, I would say, almost too far. It gets too much detail is a guy like a Tom Clancy. Who, if, if, I don't know if Matt mm-hmm. or if you've ever read any of Tom mm-hmm. Clancy books, yeah. it sounds like Jan has, and I know He's Tyler has. Ex military guy, very detailed weapons. Extreme. I mean, he gets down to the point of talking about, you know, where the crack in the dude's left fingernail is when he's pulling the yeah. trigger. And, or, and, and down to the, like, which screw on the tank is loose sometimes gets overly detailed. Do you find things like that to bog you down sometimes, Jan? Or, or do, they, no. do you really enjoy that? I actually enjoy it. Matt, because I would not be able to write something like that. Oh, right. I would hate myself if I watched Yeah, that it. would, uh, I know my wife is a huge fiction reader, and that's what I hear her complaining about. She's all of a sudden, she's like, oh, my God. Can't, you know, it's like five pages describing this one, like you said, the crack in the fingernail. Right. And, I mean, when I'm in the book, I don't really even, that doesn't affect me. I'm just reading, and I don't even pay attention to those types of things. So you can zoom past through that. Yeah. yeah. Tyler, what about you? No, it would stop me in my tracks. I would, I would freak out. Because the the that's such the opposite of the way that I understand most things and approach most things. It would just yeah, it would freak me out. It, it's something mm-hmm. I've discovered. My my attention span as I've gotten older, I, I can't stay with that anymore. I yeah. used to. I mean, I read Hunt for Red October and Patriot Games and Some of All Fears. Literally like Johnny oh, yeah, Johnny Five and Short Circuit just bl- blasting yeah, all through them. Through. And, read, and remembering uh, all of those details. Mac Bolan books. Right. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I tried to go back and reread, um, I think, uh, Cardinal of the Kremlin or one of the books. And literally, I got to a part where it was one of those three page descriptions of this one, you know, mm-hmm. extremely detailed depiction of the room and where everyone was at and what else was going on. And I lost it. Like, I just, like, I, like, <laughs> and, and fell off the table, yeah. literally, like, couldn't finish. I ended up putting the book down, and I, I almost rarely, I almost never don't finish a book. I mean, I don't care how bad the book is, I'll finish reading it. And okay. I've read this before, so maybe that was why I put it down, but I mean, I had a hard time slogging through that detail again. But couldn't that be, if you've done it before, couldn't that be where you're at at that time? What's going on yeah, in, in your It certainly could be. I mean, I think process. that could play a role. So, w- when you guys are creating, um, you know, Tyler being a character person, or or Matt being a plot person, or, or Jan being a setting person, do you generally start with your characters or start with your setting and identify what those look like first? Or do you kind of you know bounce from one topic to another serially, or do you build them all at once? I set tone, style, and rhythm immediately. Okay. Really? Just because I want them to... I want the per- whoever I'm writing to to understand how they should be feeling when these words are said. So I'm mm-hmm. almost giving context to every word that I say from then on, you know, a quick pithy comment or a long drawn out one or an insult or an exclamation or something like that, that really, um, that sets the, that sets the absolute style and tone for, uh, for the rest of the thing because it's all, it's because it's very character driven. Right. Matt, what about you? When I'm writing something like that, I mean, for me, it's, you think about what it is that you want and I will Mm -hmm. just lay something out on paper and let it sit for a day or two Mm -hmm. and then come back in and start adding the details like, you know, you just added little things that's sloshing through it. Right. You know, I love those little 
nuances, those things that add um, the, the the sensory. It's almost like to it's it. almost like you're growing something when you write that when you write that way because right. each day there's something a little bit more that that appears in your head to yes. put in. I mean, you're yeah, filling in, filling yeah, in the little details come you're up. You're growing the story. Not those you're... annoying ones that go on for yeah. three pages. Yeah, you, but, yeah, you <laughs> I, are really, I appreciate but, that. But you're growing able... and molting and then kind of like your head, your thoughts, ideas. It's cool. Well, I always think of trying to figure out which ways uh, I'm going to be able to draw out the different senses because I want to incorporate the five senses so that the person is feeling something along with able to imagine and hear thoughts and uh, or words or sounds that's or things like that to get them moving. And that's where you can change just little details in the words that, that so will bring out different... Do you start with an outline and fill in from there since you have a rough idea where you're trying to go with things? Or do you just kind of write a first draft and then come back and, and let it percolate a little bit? Depends upon the situation. Okay. Sounds like all of you keep in mind the audience that's reading this in, in the end. Well, first. the audience is me. The, the audience, audience is you. But but it's but it's it's always a separate me. It's not the audience. The me, the writer, and me, the audience are two different people, but they're the same. They're never they're, right. They're two different people. They're both me. So, Thank you, multiple personality man. No, no, no. But I mean, no. It's it's <laughs> it's it's the way that that I, that I can't I can't read something and write something at the same time. It just doesn't right. work. You have to change your perspective on it completely. And so when I say that, you know, the my I'm, I'm running the audience. I'm always writing just to me. I mean, I don't know. Do you write to others? Whoever the customer. Yeah. Is. So he. So that's that's a. So maybe stronger. So, I'm hearing so that in, from in, the two of you. In, in my case, I, I generally, almost like Tyler. Tyler says he starts with kind of the theme and the tone yeah. up front. I always write the title. I almost always have a title like, yeah. for a blog post, especially, yeah. if, especially if I'm doing yeah. one of my short, quick blog posts. I have a title before I well, do that's, anything yeah, else. That's usually your thing. And my, my whole blog post, my blog post average like 200 words, and that's a long one for me. I mean, most of my blog posts are a picture and four sentences and a action statement. Like, it's very, very quick. Mm-hmm. Just that's kind of my, my style. It's kind of where it comes from. And so my title is almost always repeated at least twice in my blog post. So my title is really the key part for me mm-hmm. because that sets the tone. It yeah. sets the rhythm yes, for yes, me. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and it sets the audience. My audience, you know, for my blogs generally is going to be salespeople or client relations type people. So I will set a, a tone usually that's somewhat either somewhat prodding or somewhat evocative. I like to poke at people, you know, and I, I say things like, you know, all CRMs suck. And, and so that's my, my blog title. And, and obviously that's going to have someone that's going to be polarized one way or the other on it. And then I go in to explain things in, in the blog post from there. So, I mean, I almost always start there and set that theme. Mm-hmm. And just really, you know, stream of consciousness flow something out there and do a quick once over and then I post. Like, I don't do a lot of editing or anything beyond that. I just let it, blah, whatever this was my thought process right there. Oh, yeah. My blog titles would be more um, seductive, but I don't mean that in like a sexy way. Like, they're not all sexy, but more of of a, I want to bring them in and then hit and then tell them right away with my, my first first lead. So our approaches are, are the same. I think I take an extra step, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you probably put a little more thought in yours than I do. I think I just take another step. I'm almost another thought. I think it's just a, another. You already have your target, right? I don't, so I'm always fishing. You've, you, you've caught, and you, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. You can get away with shorter stuff because people already understand a lot mm-hmm. of the underlying attitudes, beliefs, mm-hmm. whatever it is that you have. True. I, I, I've There's and, less and exposition the, type. Yeah, the, the, it's already. You don't have to introduce people to kind of where I'm at with mm-hmm. things. It's already on the table, mm-hmm. um, and and anyone that comes in new can easily find those things on my posts. So, mm-hmm. so Janet, sounds like you do something kind of different then. It sounds like it. Maybe again, I'm trying to discover: am I a writer or am I a facilitator to get s- stories mm-hmm. told that are already there, or put a story side by side to show the differences and where it might go? Uh, I was I was trying to do a short. Uh, piece on the process of someone that hangs out at Starbucks Mm -hmm. and I was doing writing about my own experience what I'm there for what it does to me and then watching other people and trying to make characters out of them and I bogged down because I don't make up stuff for other people well right and yet I love reading people that can do that they see a a certain style of walk a uh, interaction a dress uh, the way they dress, and then they can go with it and make up an I entire story of them. Oh, that's exciting. I but yeah. I was just blank. So I, because you're not a person that hangs out at Starbucks, you have a hard actually, time I writing. Am, yeah. Oh, no, you are? No. I, I am a yeah, lot but, but, because but, I go there to... To um, absorb the atmosphere. Well, to process yeah. my own yeah. life that's very, very busy yeah. and complicated. And I thought, well, why don't I pay attention to the what I'm around? Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't go very far with it. But again, this is a discovery 
the theme thing mm -hmm. is is good for me to recognize. Right now, I'm reading three books with diametrically opposed positions, and I'm reading them because I want to make a video that addresses the complexity of those. Yeah. People tend to go and read a certain genre, like mm -hmm. we're talking about, mm -hmm. or a mindset. And I, I like integrating different people's thoughts. So I don't know yet. I'm an editor, I guess. Yeah, it sounds like it. You're not that's a writer. An that's an interesting writing like style. It would come like out you're of ready from... to let yourself go. Yeah. Yeah. It's hmm? just, you said it doesn't sound like you're ready to let yourself go. You're, you're, you're self-editing. You're constantly editing. Yeah. Maybe, but when I collect... Yeah, but, Story, but she also then might I, be better at putting together stuff that's already there. Exactly. Because an editor is a whole different approach, and it almost sounds like she's an editor. She I mean, she's still she's a master right. storyteller, but she's better at putting together larger pieces of writing, P pulling related pieces together, yeah. into something. I or, think, or, I think so. or anything. She's yeah. she's good at, at cross mediums. Connecting. Like, yeah. I mean, You're a connector. You're yes. an adapter. Mm -hmm. Maybe so. Yeah. You plug my PS2 into USB. All right. That's impressive. Sounds that's a, that's scary an to me, old but... geek joke that like four people might get listening to this. Okay. Of course, we need four people to listen to this first, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> well, cool. We're about on our time over then, so thanks, guys, for uh, for coming on, and uh, we'll do it again next week or two weeks from now. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to Storytellers AZ. We'll see you next time. <laughs>